Pleased to be joined by this week's legend of the game. It's former Bills safety George Wilson. Legend of the game is presented by the BFLO store, the official retailer of the Buffalo Bills. The Senator. George, you look the same. Yeah, have you aged at all? What the heck is going on here? This is not, the legends don't come in here and look the same as they did when they were playing. Right, what George, the hell, man? You look like you could sell shampoo, man. Like, oh, except for your scalp, right? <laughs> hey, yeah, nothing left up top, but hey, man, just try to drink my water, keep my stress levels as low as possible. <laughs> well, congratulations. Can't wait to see. You're going to be in for the weekend. Uh, looking forward to doing some stuff. What are you looking forward to doing when you get back here? Man, I'm just looking back to just getting Western New York, give me some some buffalo wings, go and see my my old barber, go see some some friends that I really got to know really well and just really just come back and see how much the the city has grown, see the new stadium going up across the road and you know just so much that has changed since the last time I was there in 2019 and really just excited about you know, where the team is this season and just be back with amongst uh, the Bills Mafia. You know, that's, yeah. that's what I'm look, looking forward to the most. I think when people hear the name George Wilson, they immediately go to the Dallas Monday night game. I think what most people don't remember, though, is that was your first career start at safety. Uh, you know, nationally televised game, and you have the interception return for a touchdown. It was like the Cosmos uh, and the and the universe was aligned on that night for you. Um, is that is that like at the top of your list in terms of your Bills career? Uh, I think it's definitely you know for me it's kind of like one A and one B would be our our victory over the New England Patriots. I believe it was in two thousand eleven. Yep, uh, ending that long streak. Uh, but definitely the Monday night game is a, a staple and it's stained and ingrained in my mind just because. It really um, helped me to sustain my career. That one play just meant so much. You know, I was trying to, you know, find a way to stay on the team. You know, I was a special teamer like Steve was, just trying to stick around, make impact plays, and get more opportunities, you know, on the defensive side of the ball when when I had a chance to. But, you know, just that play really showed me that, that I belong, uh, that I was deserving of that opportunity. And I just tried to make the most of it because, you know, in the NFL, they're com they come far and few in between, and you got to capitalize on them when they come your way. Yeah, and it was really interesting, too, because a lot of people don't forget or maybe didn't know, you switched from being a wide receiver to a, to a defensive <laughs> back. And people have no idea. They think, you know, it. this isn't like going from – you know, left field to center field or something like that. I mean, this is like completely And doing it at the highest level of and football. And doing it at the highest level. I mean, it really says something. And plus, getting a start. Uh, not only switch positions, but now you're plugged in. Um, that's, an, that, that's an enormous accomplishment. Not, there, I don't know that there's been anybody in the last 50 years, maybe, who has done, you know, back in the day, maybe guys played both ways back in the 40s, right? But... People, guys just don't do that these days. What made it possible for you to make that transition? Certainly, it was your athleticism. It was because you could play special teams and all of that. But you know, what, tell us about the atmosphere that happened when you switched positions and and how it all came to fruition. No, it was it was a complete night and day approach. It was a different mentality when you walk into that defensive meeting room as opposed to the offensive meeting room. Uh, you know, I had some great guys around me to really help me. You know, my position coach at the time was George Katavalis. You know, he took time after practice, after meetings to stay with me and, 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 and install the playbook with me and make sure I had a good understanding of it. But after Coach Katavalis was done, you know, Jim Leonard, who was a safety with me as well. And every time I cross paths with Jim, I hug Jim, I dap him up. I tell him I'm so appreciative of him because he allowed me to take my notes from my playbook studies and simplify them and digest them in a way that when I see this, this is what I'm supposed to do. When they give me this formation, this is what I'm supposed to do. So because I was such a student of the game, I just studied, I remembered those things. And the more muscle memory and reps I got, it just became ingrained in my mind. And so then I also had Kawaki Thomas, who was our nickelback at the time. He would stay with me after practice. He would be my, my look guy and help me work on my back pedal, my, my reads, and things of that nature. And so just with guys like those, like them, who really, you know, uh, dirty their shoulders to help me continue my career, you know, that's what makes the NFL a fraternity because we help each other feed our families. We help each other realize our dreams. And so when you think about all those things, um,
there and build confidence, I said, okay, I have a, I need to shorten this learning curve. I really don't have two or three years to make this transition. I really need to make this in one off season. So yeah. the way I approached that is I said, okay, this is what I have to do defensively. So now I know what my assignment is. I know where I need to line up at. I know what my technique is. I know what my stance is. Now, how can I take my offensive background and apply it to, to, to playing defense? So because I was a wide receiver, I understand the, the, um, the, uh, the way that the quarterbacks drop, the depth of his drop had to, had to correlate with the depth of the wide receiver routes. I understood splits. I understood motions. I understood the purpose of shifts to be able to confuse the defense. So because I could anticipate, the, because I knew those things, it allowed me to begin to anticipate things rather than reacting to what I was seeing. And that's what allowed me to shorten that learning curve and, and position myself to have an opportunity to start on Monday night football like that Dallas game. Yeah. yeah. I mean, by, by the time you got to like – few years later you're running the defense on the back end I mean it's a crazy remarkable transformation uh I know you got to be amped for Buffalo Miami I mean you're not just legend of the game you get a Bills Dolphins game here at home I mean that's that's plum pickings right there and I think th I think that same year you had like a fumble return for a touchdown against <laughs> Miami in 07 if I remember right I think you also got hurt in that game though unfortunately I did. um yeah but you know, you've had a play or two against these guys. Uh, what What do you remember about, you know, that back and forth, you know, that those two teams had? It might not have been the rivalry that it was in the 90s, but you guys still didn't have a whole lot of love for each other. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, definitely uh, I had that that uh, fumble recovery for a touchdown. I did end up breaking two ribs uh, later in that game. Um, you know, but the Bills and Dolphins historically have gone back and forth. You know, we always get them up and buff below for a cold game or well, use this is a little earlier this year but you know they come up and deal with the the winter weather in buffalo and we got to go down in miami sometime we had to go down to miami sometimes and deal with the heat of you know summer heat in early december you know i remember um i believe it may have been the 09 season we left buffalo and it was like in in the 20s and this is like december it's in like the 20 or 30 degrees and we go down to Miami, we land in Miami, it's like 85, 90 degrees, it's sweltering heat. Uh, I was still playing defense and special teams. I think the only special teams I wasn't on at the time was kickoff return and extra point. So I think that day I ended up playing like 95 or 97 plays in that Miami heat. Uh -huh. I remember needing oxygen, a cold towel, uh, <laughs> you know. I think I ended up having maybe two, two sacks that game. Uh, but you know, just going back and forth and dealing with those elements, you know, and then that's that, 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 uh, you know, that football hatred going back to, you know, the, the robbery, you know, in this nineties when Steve and, and those guys were, were taking bills, uh, to the AFC championships and Super Bowls. but you know, the robbery is there. That's what makes this game so passionate, uh, because Miami fans and bills fans don't necessarily get along. Uh, you know, I saw several Miami jerseys get ripped off of fans you know, they're in Orchard <laughs> Park. And so uh, there, there, there is there is some respect there, but there's there's definitely, you know, uh, uh, underlying hatred there because, you know, of the extremes of both both cities. You know, you got a blue-collar city in Buffalo and you got kind of like a, a, a facade in, in, in South Florida where it's not reality. Everything's beautiful. Every day is almost sunny. And so, you know, you couple all those things, you know, there there's just a... a a hatred there that I think is, is, uh, is, is through and through on both sides, but you know, that's what makes this game exciting. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the matchup. Uh, it's good to see Tua back out on the field after his scare with the, with the concussion a while back, but I'm really, uh, confident in the bills and the direction the team is going this year. It looks, they're looking really good. We're balanced on all sides of the ball and guys, we have some new faces and guys have come in and made names for themselves by making plays and, and putting us in a position to be six and two right now, controlling our own destiny as we go through the second half of the season. Well, it's so good. It'll be good to see. I'm sure you'll get a load of the fans. And you're right, the stadium across the street is going up. It's growing like a weed. I mean, the thing is really taking shape. It'll it'll be interesting for you. Where do you where are you for our listeners and share the where are you living these days and, and how what are you doing with your time? Yeah, so I, I mean, I still have my home in in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, and then I uh, some years back I bought my grandfather's, my grandparents' farm back in Kentucky. So I've been developing that, uh, have an event venue that we're about to open uh, around the top of the year. 
Uh, we've been building it ourselves and, you know, getting my hands dirty. So, you know, I've, I've, I know the construction game now. I've been wearing my general contractor hat and putting roofs on and building walls and things of that nature. So uh, doing that, staying busy with the farm, but I also still have my safety foundation. We're still doing my camp and I'm still doing work with my local school district. Just still trying to trying to make a difference wherever I, wherever I spend my time at. Yeah, George, uh, George. that's a saving adolescence from everyday trials of youth. So uh, even after his playing career, George still giving back. Uh, you catch up with any of the any of the former teammates down there in Atlanta? I think Brian Scott lives down there. A few other guys, Takeo. You catch up with any mm-hmm. of those guys yeah. from time to time? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Takeo and I see each other uh, pretty often. Uh, me and B Scott. Uh, have uh, have stayed in touch as well, uh, but yeah, several guys I still cross paths with. I'm still keeping. I just saw uh, Nate Clements and London Fletcher, um, uh, Angelo Crowell, Mario Hagen, and and some other guys. Maybe about a month ago, we were all together, and so uh, it's good to see former teammates. Uh, you know, it's always good to get back, share stories, share laughs. <laughs> and just feel like one of the guys again. You know, I think that's what most former players miss the most, just being around the guys and just being one of the guys in the locker room. So it's good to get a taste of that and a feel of that, you know, every now and again. Well, I'll second that. George, thanks for spending some time with us. Great seeing you and looking forward to seeing you out there on the field on Sunday. All right. Can't wait to see you guys as well. Go Bills. All right. That's George Wilson, former uh, Bills safety, joining us. He will be your legend of the game on Sunday. Just before kickoff, he'll be getting you revved up. 